Welcome back everybody. This is the last part of the Touch Me Cal. It's the border. We have two options for the border, both very simple, although one, one takes a bit of patience. The second option takes a bit of patience. The first one is very easy. So congratulations first of all on getting this far. I'm sure you are very proud of yourselves and you should be. I've seen a lot of photos in the group that just have taken blown me away. They're so beautiful. Um, so look, without further ado, let's get the border done. I'll be talking a lot with this one because there's not a lot for me to show you. I just want to explain to you how to go about getting started with your border. So let me get set up and we'll start. Okay, so we've got some notes before you begin anything. It says, if you work to treble crochet on the edge stitches of the blanket in part 5, that was where we had that 3 double crochet extended cluster with the bead stitch, then that stitch is taller if you did the treble crochet on it instead of the, the extended double crochet on that edge. So if you did do that, you're going to have to now add, add 3 extra stitches to each of those sides in that section when you get to it because it was repeated three times that section you need one stitch extra each time you added that treble crochet in place of the extended double crochet that's what that's about okay and you just need to do that on the first round uh, of the border because then afterwards the stitch count is automatically generated you don't have to worry okay the other note we have here is about how you start now before I go to that one you remember that we started this journey with the alpine stitch. We did a starting chain and then we made the alpine stitch section and then we went through all the parts and we finished up with our flower section just recently. No deja vu on the top of that and there was no deja vu before we started. Okay, so uh, and that i probably heard me say a few times during the parts that I did different samplers with stitch work in different places. So mine is not going to look like yours at all. Now, the way we're going to start putting on our board, if you look at the notes, it says you're going to start across the bottom of the blanket. So we're going to work the bottom of the blanket first. So you need to flip it over, rotate it 180 degrees so that your alpine stitch section is right at the top. And then we're going to join over here for the right handers, the left handers you'll join over here and you'll work that way. Okay, so just be aware of that. So we will join over here and we're going to work into the bottom of that starting chain. Okay, so that we can get our stitches right. So you should, on the very first side here, you should have your original stitch count. So the pattern had 198. So you're going to make your corner that will take up one stitch over there, then you do 196 across and then the other corner will go into the last stitch so that's one there, one there, plus 196 is 198. For those of you who changed your stitch count, who would modified it, well, you need to just make sure that you maintain that stitch count if you include your corners so that you can just get your first row round up and running. All right. The other thing you must know is that you're going to jo join on the right, on the upwards, the, the good side of the blanket. I've still got my stitch, original stitch marker in there. So we're joining from the good side, turn the blanket upside down. We're going to start at the alpine section and work across. Then we're going to turn it to the side. Then we're going to work up the sides of the blanket. And that's where the little table comes in. If you just look under round one, after the starting instructions, which I'll go through in detail in a second, it has a table and it says part one, this was the alpine stitch, there it is there. It tells you, if you did the full pattern, now this is only if you did the full pattern, it tells you that you will need to pick up 12 stitches along this section to the side. The, the second paragraph of the round one instructions also tells you that for every deja vu section, just these two half double crochet rows you need to pick up four single crochet so you'll put two single crochet in the first row of half doubles and two single crochet in the second row of half doubles now look the stitch count it's not going to kill anything if you get it a little bit wrong but if you don't do enough stitches it's going to pull if you do too many the the border will ruffle and i see too many blankets that get a border put on and people don't aren't careful about how many stitches they're adding across okay so you're lucky here granny squared has done the math for you 
and so you only have to make sure section by section that you put the right number in. After you get to the top, which this isn't the top, but it was, let's pretend it is, here it is the top, the top is the flowers, we'll do the flowers and you pick up 12 along the flower border, I don't have two sets of flowers so I don't have enough for that, then you come across the top and you should have your original stitch count again here. Then we're going to turn and we're going to work backwards through the table. Start with the flower section doing 12, pebble section next, etc. Work your way from the bottom up of the table when you do the second side. Alright, so that's just getting your sort of get your bearings. So we are basically going to work around our blanket from, from the bottom across here, across, up, across, down. Okay, but to do that you have to start this way. Right, so let's get set up and I'll just get you started, alright? So now I'm going to use just a random piece of colour so you can see what I'm doing. And the round one tells us that you need to be on the right side. You need to monitor your colourways too for those of you following the pattern. And it says join in the first stitch with a standing single crochet. Now you've seen me do tons of the standing stitches. So here's my first stitch. It is the bottom layer of that chain. Here it is there. Now you might have only one loop here, depending on where you inserted your hook into that chain, I've got two because of the way I do my chains. So in we go with a standing single crochet. That's our first stitch. Then it says chain two and put a single crochet in the same stitch. So now we have formed our first corner right there. Then all you have to do is put a single crochet all the way down. So checking your stitch count, making sure you've, you don't lose any of your original stitches. We don't want our blankets to be lopsided, now do we? So get all your stitches done all the way down to the next corner. Leave the last stitch and I'll rejoin you there and we'll make our second corner. Here I am at the other end. So when you get to the other end, it says single crochet one, chain two, single crochet one, just like when we started. So you do a single crochet one, chain two, and then another single crochet in that same last stitch of the bottom edge, like that. All right. And then we're going to rotate our blanket, quarter turn, so that we can work up the side. So get yourself to that point and I'll rejoin you for the first side. Now here's where it gets tricksy because now according to the chart the part one alpine stitch section which is this needs 12 stitches added to it so we've got to find 12 spots to put a single crochet into along here. Now there are probably a multiple ways to do it, one of which is to have the pattern open in front of you and see what kind of stitch you put in and whether it's a single crochet, a double crochet, a treble and then put your stitches in accordingly. So you put one single crochet into a stitch that was only a single crochet, you put two into a double crochet, etc. up the line. I do it by, by, by visual. Uh, I look and I look and I say okay this is about halfway I need to get six stitches in there and I get six stitches in there because sometimes the stitch work at the end is hard to get into so I just make sure that I'm spreading my stitches out as evenly as I possibly can so I know I'm going to put one almost immediately in here I'm pretty sure I'm going to have to put one down the end there so that's my two then I've got a stitch here three maybe four five somewhere here six seven somewhere in there 8, 9, 10, 11, and I've already put one. That's I've gone a little bit too loose there. I might have to jimmy it up a bit. And I will do that as I go. It's fortunately a very short section. So even if it doesn't look right the first time, pull it out, do it again. Make sure they're evenly spaced. The other thing I would suggest to you is don't just pick up one loop out of a stitch from a side stitch. See if you can get at least two just gives it a bit more stability and doesn't pull gaping holes into your work okay but also the other thing I guess is don't go too deep so don't go in between the stitches you're going to create a hole get into the sides of a stitch so there's a stitch there there's two loops up the top and there's one at the bottom I'm going to go under the top two loops and go in there and you see even though well, the blanket's going to pull anyway but I haven't just opened up a giant gap there Right. So there's a few little things like that 
to think about as you go and you get the hang of it it's it's really look it's it's what you want to do okay I'm going to try now and just start putting in some stitches and some of them may be a little bit tricky you might have to wiggle things around I'm going to get in there for my first one right there that's one I'm going to grab the two loops to the top for that one that's two I might put one in here that's three I might come over here somewhere that's four let me see where's my middle it's about there I need to come over maybe a little bit over here that's five and six let me see how we're doing okay I want to do this for every single one I just want to give you a, a view of how I do things whoops I only grabbed one loop there I want two seven see how about in there eight oh yes I did get it nine ten one in there eleven and one there twelve there we go as long as there's enough stretch now look I'm going to say this this is a guideline if you're finding that this is not stretching enough for you add a couple of stitches because the stitch counts aren't all that important as long as you keep them consistent as the rounds increase as long because the stitch work is exactly identical there's no fancy stitches that you have to have the right stitch count but just do your best to keep your stitch count consistent but if you have not I've had it's happened to me before where somebody's given me a guide of how many stitches I should pick up and it was too tight I had stitches stretching too far over and so I had to adjust so you might have to do the same but I think I'm pretty sure our test team it's hooked on sunshine has got this right so do what they say first to do what the pattern says granny squared and all the testers and see how you go but see I got my 12 in fairly easily there was no science to it it was basically by look and I've done it now I've reached deja vu and I need to put four stitches in along here Remember it says four. So there's one can go in there. I'm gonna put one in there if I can get in. It may be fiddly sometimes, especially on these end stitches, and depending on how tightly you've pulled them, two, put one in there. Oops, come here. Oop, dropped it. Three and one here makes four. Now this is just your setup, bro. Take the time to get this right. This is the setup that frames the whole blanket. Okay, so that's the alpine section done and a deja vu done. And as I said, there is the table there for you now to continue on up the line. The next section is the bobble stitch section, which is, I don't know, I've got it over here somewhere. There it is. There's my bobble stitch. So now I have to find how many? 10 stitches along here because it's not as tall as the alpine stitch section was. And you can tell when you look at it that why the numbers vary because some stitches are th some sections are thicker wider than others so that's all you have to do all the way up to the next corner all right so i'm not going to do that i'm uh, i will do a little bit more just so i can show you how we're going to go around the corner so i'll just use this little sample section and go around ignore the fact that i've got a deja vu here because i'm going to do other things with this later on so I will just pretend that this is the top of your flower section and I'll show you how to go around the corner. Okay, there it is. This is what it looks like so far. Now when you get to the, to the other end and you'll be working now at the top here which will be the flower section. So you will have put in all your stitches all the way up and now we're going to turn the corner. We're going to put our corner stitches in that first stitch where your flowers are. Right, I don't I'm not going to use the flower one, but I will show you how to do it. So here we are at the top, and here is oh, I actually got a chain here, but I'm going to work into this chain here, which should be your first stitch, like I just showed you. And we just do again one single crochet. If I can get in there, there it is. One single crochet. I'm gonna struggle a bit because it is a chain. There it is, got it. Chain two and another single crochet into that same little spot. Right, but as I said, yours will be here. In that first stitch at the top of your flower section right and then again just like the very beginning all the way across now you've made your corner and that's used up the first stitch so you need another 196 across leave the last one to put your corner in again which is one single crochet chain two one single crochet then you're going to do now the in reverse order as I said before starting this time from the bottom with the flowers 
and you're going to do your counts down the down the line. So if you have adjusted the number of repeats or whatever else you've done, you're going to have to figure this out. So if you but if you've done the complete blanket, all the sections full, the full number of repeats and everything, then your stitch count is in that table. So work your way all the way back down to the alpine stitch again all the way down and I'll do it too and I'll meet you down here I'm just going to crochet around this little piece here so I can then show you the first row of the second row I should say but the first row of the border option one and when you finish this first setup row you just have to join to that first standing single crochet with a slip stitch and not cut off your yarn. The border is in a solid colour I believe, at least this one that I'm doing that I can see is in a solid colour. So join to that first single crochet with a slip stitch, do not end off. Check your stitch counts, they are provided for this first edge, first round, uh, if you're following the, end of the full pattern as it was written. If not, you need to uh, check that you've got everything where it needs to be. Alright, that's the first round of the border. Now we'll come back in a second and we'll start border option one. Well that would have been a big job getting all the way around your blankets and doing all those special counts but you've done it now and you don't have to do it again. That's it. We now have the rest of the border um, and it's one stitch and so the only things that you're going to have to remember is what the stitch is how to do your corners and there's one special instruction for round four to keep your corners coming di beautifully diagonally at and not twisting as our projects are want to do because of the stitch anatomy and because of how we finish stitches. So I'll go into that in a bit more detail in a second. Just one more thing to say, there are two border option stitches. One is the regular half double crochet which you all know how to do but I'll still show you. And the other option is a is called the herringbone half double crochet. Bit tricksy to do that one, takes a bit of patience and practice. It's not a difficult stitch, it's just a little bit on the awkward side. And because we are so used to not doing it, it takes a bit of time to remember what you're supposed to be doing. But it's really a very easy stitch and it's a very pretty effect. Okay, so round one is complete for both styles, both border options. Now Border option one, as I said, is just your regular half double crochet border. And so once you, you should have joined to that first standing single crochet we did, that starting one there, now you need to slip stitch into that corner. So just slip stitch to get yourself into the corner. Now we are suggested here, we have a hint that says you should, you know, to use a stitch marker to mark the center half double crochet in each corner because our corners are, will not have any chains in them. They're only going to have half, three half double crochet. And so we're being advised to mark that center half double crochet. So to start, we've slip stitched into the corner and we're going to make a chain one that does not count as a stitch. Then we're going to make half double crochet two in the same space two half double crochet into the corner okay one and two now yes we did do only a chain one at the start we oftentimes in hooked on sunshine patterns we do a chain two but then that represents our first half double crochet but in this instance granny squared wanted a full half double crochet so she's just done a chain one and we're going to ignore that chain one and there's my first half double crochet and there's my second one now just for this starting here, we're not going to do a full corner. We're only going to do two of the three half double crochet we need and we're going to put the last one in when we come back around. Just one more in there. So effectively that makes this first half double crochet right here our middle one. So I'm going to mark that one. That's going to be my middle one right there. Even though it's the first one at the moment. Okay. Then the rest of it is super duper easy. It's one half double crochet in every single stitch all the way down to the next corner. And when you get to the next corner down here, you're just going to put three half double crochet into that corner space. So I'll just get myself here so you can see me do it. All right, I'll be back in one more second. So I've reached my corner. There's my chain two space. I'm just going to put three half double crochet straight in there two and three 
and then I will mark the middle one so I can find it again. Let's grab another stitch marker like that and just leave that there because they will be a little bit hard to see after you've gone around and then again we turn around now and we just put one half double crochet all the way around until we come back to the beginning. Now the beginning you must remember to put the extra half double crochet so I'll meet you back here we'll put the final half double crochet in all right we'll talk in a minute so my first round is completed I've come all the way around and the last thing that I need to do because the repeat ends on three half double crochet in the corner but then it says omitting the last two half double crochet so we've because we already did the first two so all we're going to do is one into that same chain starting chain two space from the previous round we just need to put one more half double crochet to complete our corner right and then it says join to the beginning half double crochet with a slip stitch well that's this stitch right here that I've got marked so I'm going to slip stitch join to that and now I've completed round two and we are ready to go on to round three now Round three is basically what we've done in round one. The, really the only thing that's going to change is your stitch count. So if you've done the full pattern exactly as written with the exact amount of repeats and the exact starting chain, those stitch counts apply to you. Everybody else, guys, you need to keep track yourselves. So now when you get to round three, you are joined in that middle half double crochet by default. We're already joined there. So round three starts again the same way, chain one, and then two half double crochet into that same stitch that we're joined in. I'm going to take my stitch marker right now because it's in my way. So two half double crochet again into that first stitch. So again we're doing a partial corner to begin. And when we come back around we'll put the third half double crochet in there. Alright and again as normal just as before one half double crochet into every single stitch beginning in that last half double of the corner all the way down and then when you get to the other end every third uh, every middle stitch of your three which is marked takes three half double crochet so you need to finish round two and three with this half double crochet border okay but then when you get to round four it changes a little bit okay so I'm going to explain round four and then you guys can go off and do rounds five, six, and seven because round seven then is the same as round four. What we're doing is just slightly adjusting the corner in round four and seven so that the diagonal line doesn't skew, as I mentioned earlier. And the reason for that is because, as we've said in many of our videos, because of the way we make our stitches, they pull to the dominant side. So here's the top loops of my stitch. They're to the right because I'm a righty. And for the lefties, yours will be the opposite. So when you're making a corner, it will continue to pull to your dominant side, whichever one that is. So in the fourth round and in the seventh round, Granny Squared has adjusted the corner just a little bit back towards the center line for you. So I'll just show you how to do that and then you can go away happily and finish your borders and then I'll talk to the others for the herringbone half double crochet. So now when you finished round three, and I haven't because I'm just demonstrating, when you finished round three you will have put your final, your first of your three half double crochet in as your last action for the round three. You will have joined to the starting half double crochet with a slip stitch and now you're waiting for me. So now as I said earlier we're going to shift the corner just slightly to realign it. So we begin again just like normal with a chain one. And then we put one half double crochet in the same stitch this time, not two. Because we are now going to move our corner into the third double crochet of the corner over here. So here is where we're going to put the three half double crochet. Look, if you're not, if this doesn't bother you at all, you don't have to do any of this. You can just keep going round as normal for the full seven, I think. Is it seven rounds? You know, I should check. I keep saying I don't know, but I should check eight rounds there are eight full rounds for the half double crochet probably the same for the herringbone so there's my three now and so my corner is going to push out this way a little bit and pull push this way and pull the corner back into alignment okay now it's not obviously visible to you right now but it will be as the blanket grows and then you just continue on 
with the normal half double crochet down the full side. So then what has to happen is when you get to the next corner, okay, you're going to put your corner not in the second stitch, it's still marked, but that now is your trigger to move over by one, just for round four and round seven. So instead of putting my corner there, I'm going to put a normal regular one half double crochet there and three in the third stitch of the, th the of the three half double crochet. The instructions are very explicit and the where the changes are there in red font so you can see them. So read the pattern. So for your prompts, you get to round four, you're going to shift over by one for your new corner set of stitches, your three half double crochet. You can do that all the way around on round four. When you get to round five, you go back to normal, the way we did rounds one to three. So you do round five and six, and then you adjust again on round seven. It's all in the pattern. You really don't need me, you guys are pretty switched on now. That's what you've got to do for row f round four and seven. Then you do a final round eight of normal stitch work. And look, you can make it as big or as small as you like this border, but you can see how it has tidied up my edges. You know, if you're ever worried about them being uneven, it just pulls everything into line. I didn't even block this piece. I never do. I'm just not a blocking kind of person. And it looks perfectly square now. Now when you get to round five there's one more thing you need to remember you read the pattern please because if you recall we started round four to shift the corner so we did a solitary half double crochet first then we switched the corner over by one and put our three half double crochet in the next stitch when you come back around and join you're joining to that solid solitary half double crochet so what I need you then to do to start round five and then later round eight you're going to have to slip stitch across to the middle of the three half double crochet so you can begin round five so you're slip stitching over two stitches it's a very simple concept okay so just get yourself back into the center stitch after you've completed round four and then carry on as normal that's the only thing you need to remember okay off you go get it done Okie dokie, now let's get on to the herringbone half double crochet version of the border. I defy anyone to say that three times without having a fit. Now, we have a very good full photo stitch tutorial in the prelude for it. It's a reminder to us if they're in the pen, and we also are reminded to try and use those stitch markers in the middle of the three half double crochet stitches in our corners, which this time will be herringbone half double crochet stitches. All right, so you will have still had to do round one, which was all the single crochet to get up your stitches, to get up the sides and everything else. You will have come all the way around and joined to your starting single crochet. Now again, you need to slip stitch into the corner chain two space so that we can start. Then we're going to chain one. That does not count as a stitch and it tells us to do half herringbone half double crochet two in the same space which is exactly the way the half double crochet border starts but how do you do a herringbone half double crochet now it's very easy yarn over pull up a loop in the indicated stitch down in there pull up a loop and this is where it shifts and this is the part that gets a bit awkward and hard to remember to do we are not going to do any yarn over now that's loop that we pulled up we are going to continue to pull through the second loop on the hook like that then we're going to do a yarn over and we're going to pull through the two remaining loops on the hook now it doesn't look like anything at this point it really doesn't I'm just going to drag this light across it doesn't look like anything until you do a lot of it and then it just has a really nice effect so let's do another one because we have to do two here so yarn over pull up a loop keep going pull that loop straight through the second loop on your hook and then yarn over and pull through two. There is no straightforward way to do this other than that. You are going to just have to practice and until you get comfortable with it. Once you've made the first two, just like with the half double crochet people, you're going to finish the last one when you come back around. So now all we've got to do is work a herringbone half double crochet in every stitch all the way down the line. So yarn over into the next stitch, pull up a loop pull it through the, f the other loop on the hook then yarn over and pull through two. So I would recommend to you to work very loosely here. It's not about a bigger hook size because you're still going to have the same problem. Work loosely, yarn over, pull up a loop, 
You see how I tend to drag my stitches away from me? That's whenever I need extra space I do that because it stretches the loop here a little bit. And then I can just get under it, which I've, because I've been reworking this yarn, it's getting very thready. And there it is. Again, yarn over, pull up a loop, pull it through, yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull up a loop, pull it through, pull through two. You will get the hang of it, but initially, whoops, it's hard to remember to not do another yarn over. You're going to you're going to hesitate a few times, but just expect it. Whoops! See, I did it right there. As soon as you lose your concentration, you forget what you're supposed to be doing. So, I would just turn off the TV for this first bit till you get right into the groove. And you see, it looks it's got this little beautiful little effect here. The stitches look a little bit to the sideways, and that's going to form the herringbone look when you've finished it. So you go all the way down, you finish the last one in there and then you put three of them in the corner and you mark the middle one, okay, so that when you come around you know which one it is. It's exactly the same as the half double crochet people but you're just doing a variation on the stitch. So again, in, pull up a loop, pull it through, then do yarn over, pull through two, pull up a loop, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, pull up a loop, pull through two. And I, even I'm still hesitating and I've done it, you know, and I'm still hesitating because your muscle memory, oops, tells you, <laughs> wants to make a half double crochet. But as you can see, you can, you will pick up speed after you've done, you know, 50 or 60 of them, you will start to pick up speed. It might be easy, just pinching it like that just helps you get past that first loop. Like that. Okay. Alright, so that's all you have to do for that. Three in every corner, mark the middle one, come all the way back around. You must remember, like the other group, to put a final herringbone half double crochet in that starting point before you join to your first herringbone half double crochet that you made, not the chain one, the stitch itself. Join there and then I'll come back and talk to you about what happens for the rest of the rounds. Okay, so border option two with the herringbone is very fortunate. So you, there's a bit of a trade-off here. You get a slightly tougher stitch to make but the beauty of this one is you don't have to shift your corners like the half double crochet people do. I didn't realize that at the time but I do now. So you will make all of your rounds rounds two to eight. You also have eight rounds full totally to do so up to round eight in exactly the same way working every corner stitch every new corner into the middle stitch of your group of three. You don't have to shift your corners like the half double crochet people do. So I'm going to explain to you why that is and that's why I've done, the, this is the half herringbone to there and this is the regular half double crochet there. I'm just going to zoom in a little bit more, hopefully not get too blurry here, so I can show you why it's different. Now, if you have a close look, and I've said this many times in the videos, and I said it at the beginning, stitch anatomy pulls your stitches a little bit to your dominant side because that's where the top loops drop. If you look here, you can see my half double crochet here, and you see the top loops cross over. The stitch finishes here, or starts here, but the top loops are halfway over the middle of it. Same over this, and the stitch ends here, and the next stitch top loops cross over. See how they're not fully aligned, okay, they're in between, the top loops fall in between. But when you're making the herringbone half double, here is where my stitch ends, right there. This is the, sorry, the border of the stitch, the front of it or the back of it, whatever you're looking at. If I stretch it open, you can see that the stitch ends there and so do the top loops. And here, there's the stitch edge and so are the top loops. So the top loops actually frame the stitch perfectly, they are perfectly aligned vertically, which is why your corners won't skew and why you don't need to move them. Okay, so anyone who was doing the half double crochet is probably now thinking, oh I should have done the herringbone. But the herringbone is a bit of a trickier stitch to make, there's not quite the same rhythm, but um, you have one less thing to worry about. So 
I'm going to leave it there guys you come around especially for the herringbone guys just a reminder you've got to put your third herringbone stitch in here before you join up and then you start again and all of your corners will go into the middle group of those groups of three in the corners your stitch counts are identical as the half double crochet scenario everybody's doing eight full rounds of border the first one being the single crochet where you set up and then seven more rounds of either the half double crochet or the herringbone half double crochet. So that's really it people. I'm not going to do any of this because I'm lazy. I'm going to leave you to finish your beautiful blankets, taking your time. Um, and look, you know, actually you can, if you want to, you can even play with both borders because it, the stitch counts don't really matter. It's just straight stitch work, but just be careful not to lose stitches or the blanket will start to pull in on you. Or don't add extra stitches or you'll get that wavy thing happening or the, the ruffle thing happening and wondering why what's going on so just be mindful of getting into your first stitches and your last stitches putting three in every corner and you'll be fine now at the very end of the pattern there's a little extra little note there for everybody just talking about twiddle fiddle bits and bobs it says the granny squared stitched on buttons and added tassels to her crocodile stitches you can do that if you like it's completely optional um, she also notes that if you do go down this route deja vu is the perfect perfect section to add to and put things there uh, remember to stitch those on very very tightly and securely so they do not come off make sure you use good secure square knots so they don't come loose and keep keep in mind that these items will be washed so make sure they're not the sort of things that will catch like bells and hooks and things like that they catch you know so make sure they're smooth objects uh, she's got some favorite items there zips pom-poms tassels beads buttons pieces of lace leather cord ribbons bows charms plastic charms felt cutouts fringes crochet motifs fluffy bits and pieces crochet curly spirals spirals the options are endless and I only tripped up on the last word huh Guys, it has been an adventure. These blankets are gorgeous. The people you're making for them are going to love them. You've done a good thing. Please pop into the Hooked on Sunshine's Patterns and Cows Facebook group and show us all your handiwork. We'd love to see it. I'm signing off again for yet another fantastic cow crochet along completed. Thank you for joining me. Love having you. Till next time. Bye for now.